Do you ever get lost when you're writing code? Can't find a file? Can't figure out where to make a change? Even a quote unquote easy change is hard if you don't know where to look. That's why navigation is so important. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over basic navigation in PyCharm. If you just started in software development, this is absolutely essential information. And if you've been working for a while, you should already know this, but your secret's safe with me if you don't. Your IDE is your home. It makes sense to get comfortable in it. If you use IntelliJ or WebStorm or any other JetBrains IDE, all the information here will apply as well. All the shortcuts will be the same. By the end of this video, you'll feel comfortable with the basics of navigation, and hopefully you'll never get lost again. Welcome back to Tommy Codes. My name is Tommy. Let's jump right into it. I downloaded the source code for Fast API, which is a very popular Python web framework. And let's explore it together. Let's explore it together using the fanciest shortcuts PyCharm has to offer. I don't really want to be in the readme anymore. We're not going to read the readme. Don't worry, we are not going to read the readme. We're going to jump straight into the files. And to open the file browser, you're going to hit Command-1. Command-1, and now we have this fancy file browser that just opened on the left-hand side of the screen. If you hit up and down in this browser, you'll be able to go to different files. And if you hit enter on a particular file, the file will open. Then you can use the arrow keys and your focus is actually in the file. You can hit command one again to go focus back on the file browser. And what you might wanna do in the file browser is search. So this background.py that you see towards the bottom here, I could painstakingly press the down arrow seven times. But I don't want to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is type in BAC and a search is going to happen. And PyCharm is searching through all the files there and the match is going to be in yellow. And if there are more than one match, you can cycle through with the up and down arrow, which is quite nice. Let's get out of the file browser. We're done here. Let's go into this file, which is called, I don't know, model.py or something. How, how many lines are in this file? I don't know, maybe we can scroll to the bottom. So you, you might be tempted here to grab the mouse and scroll to the bottom. Don't do that, do not do that. Instead, hit Command End, and that will take you all the way to the bottom. And if you wanna go back to the top, hit Command Home. And so we see, what was that, 38 lines? 38 lines of mouse scrolling, painful mouse scrolling were saved with this shortcut. If you look at the top, our imports are folded, so PyCharm is, is hiding those for us for our convenience hit command equals to unfold everything. And then once you decided this stuff doesn't matter right now, hit command minus and it'll go away. Okay, let's look at some of these classes here. So we got some classes here. What do they do? Where are they used? Where would security requirement be used? Well, I wanna copy the string security requirement so I can search for it. How do I get over there? Well, I could hit the right arrow key six times, but I have self-respect. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. So instead what I'm gonna do is hit option and hit right, and this is gonna jump you around word by word. And if you wanna go back to front of the line, you can hit command left. If you wanna go to the end of the line, you hit command right. So that's how you jump around the different words, the basic navigation. If I wanna copy the string, so you hit option up, you select the word, you hit command C to copy the selection, and then you hit command shift F to search for this using full text search. Even if you haven't used PyCharm very much, you probably know about full text search and maybe we even feel powerful when you're using it. I'm here to burst your bubble. I'm here to ruin the fun. Don't use full text search. Use these other forms of search. So first of all, if we want to find the, if we want to find the usages of this, full text search is not only the usages because there might be a string that's called security requirement. We want to find the usages of the symbol. So what we're going to do instead is hit command B. And this is going to take us directly to the usages. And we get this pop-up window here. Just like all pop-up windows in PyCharm, you can search here. So maybe I want fast for fast API and that will narrow my results down here. Then I can hit enter and see, oh yeah, we imported it here. If I wanna go back to where I was, back to the original definition, I can hit command B again. Pretty much any symbol, you'll be able to hit command B and something will happen and something navigation related will happen. So just keep that in mind. What if I wanna go back to where I was, but I don't, I'm not actually on the symbol. So maybe I'm you know, in this other file here and I don't know how to get back to my previous location. I forgot where I came from. We'll hit option, command, left. And that'll take you to your previous location. And, and this stacks up like a history. So you can hit it multiple times. And as you just saw, option, command, right will undo that. We'll bring you back to the future, I guess you could say. Let's say you want to search for a class. Again, maybe you're tempted to use the full text search. Don't do it. Do not do that. Instead, we're going to search for a class with command O. Command O is going to search for a class. And here we can go for, what was it called? Like security requirement, there we go. And look again at how the search is kind of fuzzy. And so even though I just typed in S-E-R-E, -E, it found security requirement. If I hit enter, it'll take me directly there. That's class search. What if I wanna find a function? Functions don't have to be attached to classes, especially in Python. Well, there's this thing called the symbol search, which is option command O. 
And with symbol search, it will look through functions, constants, variables, also classes, but it's still much, much better than the full text search if you know you're looking for a symbol. So here we can do, I don't know, get access token. Sure, get access token from one of these tests. We just found it. That was pretty easy, honestly. So that's the, the symbol search. Maybe you wanna search for a file. Well, you could hit command one, go to the file browser and start looking for your file, but maybe you don't wanna do that and maybe that's even too much work for you. So instead you're gonna hit command shift O and bring up the file search window. And with the file search window, you can type in whatever you want. So I don't know, models. Yeah, open API models PY. We're back to models.py. Okay, now I need a terminal. I need to go to my terminal and open a Docker file or something. I don't know. You need to go to the terminal. This is gonna happen. You need a command line. And I know you're tempted, oh, we'll just use iTerm. Oh, just, just use the terminal in Mac, it's really sick. No, don't do that. You're gonna have to scroll away. You might have to even look on a different screen. You're gonna maybe even pick up the mouse, which I really hope you don't do. Why would you do that when you have a terminal right in PyCharm? Hit Option F12. Option F12 will open the terminal and shift your focus there. And then I can type in, do an LS, whatever fancy stuff you had to do in the terminal. And then when you're done, just hit Option F12 again and it will close. That easy, it's that easy. What about this example? Okay, let's do a command B. I just did a command B on this example and there's kind of a lot of them and I don't really wanna look through all of them or rather I want them broken down by type because if we look here, this is an import. If we look here, this is a type hint. Where else? I guess those are the two main ones but I wanna search broken down and maybe there's a better way. So hit option F7. And here, this is gonna open up the find window. The find window, by the way, you can open and close with command three. And here, again, we can navigate with the keyboard and it's gonna show us all the usages, but not only are we gonna get the usages, it's gonna break it down by type. So here is the type hint and here's the import statement. It's gonna give us this little file tree preview where you can see exactly where it was used. And if we go into the usage down in the tree here, we get a preview on the right-hand side. Okay, I think we've done enough on the navigational front today. At this point, if you've been paying attention the whole time, you're probably easily in the top 50% of PyCharm developers in terms of effectiveness. No, I'm not kidding. It sounds a little sad, but the vast majority of developers and just people in general for that matter, don't bother to spend the time it takes to master the tools of their craft. And especially st stuff like navigation is not glamorous. It's not advanced AI, but it's still very, very important. As software engineers, we're a lot more like craftspeople than we are writers or artists. We're like carpenters, honestly, but instead of using hammers and nails and saws, we're using IDEs, terminals, and version control systems. We should act accordingly, and you would never trust a carpenter who couldn't hammer in a nail. Why would you trust a software developer who can't navigate in PyCharm without using the mouse? It just makes you look like a rookie, and your peers are gonna notice this stuff. You're gonna garner respect just by using the tools confidently. And people will treat you like you know what you're doing because you're gonna act like you know what you're doing. It's just straightforward stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you learned something from this video, leave a comment below and let me know what shortcut you didn't know before. And let me know, give me a promise in the comments that you're gonna continue learning PyCharm. We're gonna do some more videos for you guys going more in depth. We're gonna talk about the debugger. We're gonna talk about some of the actual fun features and now that we got the basics out of the way. And while you're at it, check out some of these other videos on my channel. Thank you guys for the support. We appreciate you.